Last week, my wife of 17 years told me that she did not love me any fucking more. At first, it felt like my entire world was fucking shattered. Just pissed on. Gone. But over the next week, the next seven days, it was just a truly beautiful and selfless experience. It was painful yet caring and calm. I'm not, it's hard to describe, but I'm going to try. We speed ran divorce. That's right. That's right. Don't get me wrong. This wasn't about rushing to the finish line or anything of that sort. It wasn't about, you know, it wasn't about crossing go and collecting $200. It was about handling something impossibly painful in the healthiest and most thoughtful way that you can. Try your fucking best. You're an adult. We didn't fight. I cried a little bit like a bitch, but we didn't fight. We didn't avoid it. We sat down and talked like we hadn't in years. It was, it was you know what? It was, it was beautiful. It felt so good. We covered everything that needed to be covered. Why did this happen? How can we make sure that the kids are okay? What do we need to do to move forward in a way that's respectful to each other, our friendship moving forward, and realistic for today's economy? Nothing was off limits. We listed off a few people that uh, we swear we will never sleep with just to, you know, hey, that's what we did. We have a list. Each of us has a list, and that's good to go. Good to go. That, that's fine. We actually faced our weaknesses coming into this conversation. This was fucking hard, okay? She's not the most emotionally available person, and, um, you know, I'm like, a, I'm like a fixer, you know what I mean? And, you know, it's something that she's always struggled with, the availability, um, but this time she showed up and she fucking delivered. Okay. Uh, but like I said, like I was about to say, I'm, uh, you know, I fix things. I always see a problem. I'm like, I got to fix that. I got to fix that. Right. You know, and I had to accept that no amount of effort from me or love on my part is going to change how she feels. That was brutal, but it fucking did it. It fucking did it. It snapped in me. It clicked. It didn't snap. It clicked. I get it. I understand. This took one week. One week to start unfolding a 17-year relationship. And god damn, I'm proud of us. We are just doing so, so good with it. We made our decisions quickly, but thoughtfully and realistically, as I will say again. Making sure that every single thing is looking for the best possible outcome for everyone. There's no pettiness in anything. Nothing. We're splitting the custody of the kids 50-50. One week with me, one week with her. I'm going to live in the school district. So they can, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be beautiful. I'm going to move right down the road about uh, four miles. Not very far. A nice uh, apartment with a fucking golf course and a gym and a pool. and It's, it's nice. It's going to be nice for me. And that also lets the kids have us 100% fully. Half the time with mom, half the time with dad. You know what I mean? It's just beautiful. We agreed to go to every holiday together. Now, we understand that in the future, once partners are uh, coming around and whatnot, things may change. And we are aware of this. But for now, we deal with now. You know what I mean? She's keeping my last name. I, I just feel really respected and loved by that. Uh, not because she has to, because she could just simply change it back, but because it's tied to the family we have built together. We want to have the same last names as our children. It's important to us. Um, she's keeping me on her insurance as well until the actual divorce. It takes 18 months for a no-fault divorce. So I get to stay on the insurance, get a bunch of benefits, tax benefits, this, this, and that. You know, it's going to be great. These weren't small decisions, man. They fucking hurt. They fucking hurt. I cried a little bit. I'm a bitch sometimes. But I'm honest. If these were acts of genuine care from her, from me, they were just so thoughtful. And that's what she is. She's just so thoughtful, kind, and uh, just a deeply good person. And I hope to aspire to be that same level of good person myself. 
We've also set some boundaries that uh, reflect the, um, the reality of what's happening right now. Um, we sleep in different rooms. Um, we have stopped being physical. We know that would be confusing. It would be easy, but confusing for probably me. It was not easy, but it was necessary. And you, when you're an adult, you do what you have to, whether you want to or not, you do it. And through all of this, the, the kids are thriving. They're so happy for both of us. They're happy to split time with us equally. They're happy that we're being respectful to each other. They're happy that we still love each other. But even if we're not in love with each other anymore, you know what I mean? But she's not in love with me. I love her with every fiber of my being. But I'll tell you something. She said it plainly and without malice. It was just a simple truth. And because of that, whenever love stops being reciprocated and you truly feel it not being reciprocated, it starts to take a, a whack at the old, the love, the in love that you have. It starts to take a little whack at it. It starts a little chip, a little chip, chip, chip off of it. Uh, the option of moving forward and moving on is very real to me now. Very real. I'm 100% open to it. 100% open to it. I'm going to live for, alone forever, though, for sure. You see, the thing was, is I mistook our caring love, um, the kind of love that you have when you just deeply respect someone and value them, uh, being in love. You know what I mean? That's just how it, that's life, bro. That's what it is. I'm just being real here. Once I accepted that she really did not love me, it changed everything. It let me see that I could move forward. It really say that I could move forward and I think I just took the most effective strategy to get you know the most make this transition as smooth as possible maybe to get the most positive outcome in the least amount of time you know what I mean what did we do um, we removed each other from the life 360 circles so that we can't see where each other is ever um, we kept our separate circles with us and our children she got a new phone line so that she's not being able to see who who I'm calling. I'm not being able to see who she's calling. We're really doing this. She stayed at a hotel um, one night so that I could get, get used to sleeping without her in the, in the house, at the very least. And the kids could get used to that. Oh, I'm going out with friends on Friday. Um, I'm going to jam with them. Uh, they don't have a guitar, bro, so I'm going to fucking jam with them. I'm do, I don't normally do things like that, you know what I mean? So we're trying, we're doing shit. We're like, we're making friends, making uh, support circles. I've had a huge support circle online. I had a huge support circle in real life. And so is she, and it's just been fucking beautiful, you know? Oh, and the friends that she doesn't, uh, that I'm, the friends that I'm going to see, she doesn't know, so that we're building a life separate from each other. She's already joked that I should join Tinder. She's already joked immediately, yeah. yeah that did not take long, she's serious. Letting go doesn't mean you stop caring about each other at all. It means you stop clinging. It's about respecting the person that you love enough to let them find their own happiness. Uh, this is something that divorced people that have found peace understand. The miserable ones will tell you to hold on to everything at all costs. But holding on to someone who needs to be free is not love. It's very different from love. I don't know what it is, but it's, it's controlling. It's manipulative. So here we are one week later. Uh, we're still living together for now. Um, I'll be moving to my own apartment next month. And I'm still heartbroken. I'm still crying a little sad boy. I'm a sad boy. You know better. Please don't make this last forever. But I'm hopeful, very hopeful, very optimistic. I don't think I'm going to have trouble meeting new people. Um, I hope I meet a new person before she does. That would be great. Mm, this wasn't a story about losing. This is a story about respect, care, and actual love. And it's cliche, but they say it. And it was true. If you love someone, you truly love someone, you'll let them go. Crazy asshole. All right, guys. I just wanted to give you the full breakdown on this. And um, I'm fucking beautifully happy right now, and so is she. So that's great. Bye, guys.